Um, Would you prefer that I turn the recording off? Uh, no, I thought you were going to do the introduction. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to today's um, GSOC Mentor Meeting for the Jenkins Cloud Events plugin. And we are uh, speaking about Trichy's work in the last week and moving the plugin towards a first release version. So I did uh, review the pull request and got it merged. And uh, just one thing, one uh, thing I want to say was uh, the README would uh, be nicer with the TOC table of content, and that's it. And I think we can move on to doing the first release uh, this week. We can catch up on uh, Wednesday or even tomorrow uh, to do that. And yeah. Um, so, what are your next steps of the plugin then? Um, we also, what was that about README? Did you say TOC? Yeah, uh, table of content. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, got it. Um, yeah, so the the past week, so we talked with um, the event sake team just to get a better understanding of how they have been um, developing their like events um, sync for the Captain and Tekton sort of integration. Um, and I was able to clear some things uh, in terms of how we can design a sync, which is agnostic. And also it can deal with different kinds of events in different structure and coming in from different sources. So I think that if we can talk a bit about that, so we have a better understanding of the infrastructure that can be in place for the um, the, the, the stage with Jenkins as a sync. Uh, I think it'd be, that will be a bit helpful in moving forward and just thinking about everything that's needed for Jenkins as a sync. Um, the last time we were also discussing uh, when like uh, Kara and I we were discussing about how we how like designing a sync which is you know a, a, an actually cloud native uh, sync which can deal with uh, fault or just like network and transient failures and also can deal with retries. Um, but retries is also applicable to Jenkins as a source, but that's something that can be accomplished in an easy manner. But for Jenkins as a sync, you know, if it, so when we were talking with the events sync team, um, they they specifically had sort of a, a a middleware I'd say, which is dealing with events coming in from Tekton and Captain. So they had like kept an inbound and tacked on inbound and like outbounds for both of them. And what they're doing is basically like transforming um, the, the the cloud events, which is going out. And then they're, they have a, a, a middleware in between, which is like a cloud events broker, which deals with receiving and sending of the events. And if our sync is totally like an HTTP request response system, only like if you're designing um, <clears throat> or if you're, for example, like receiving events only in that manner, you know, only like a post request to the endpoint where it's present. Uh, I think that it's really going to tightly couple things with that infrastructure of Jenkins server or Jenkins node, whichever, whatever is dealing with the events always being available. Um, and then it also leads to the possibility of losing events um, some of what it might, some of which might be crucial. So I was thinking if maybe we can start out by like maybe testing with Knative because that's sort of the whole, you know, like the, the, their, the, the product is actually something that might help us, but also I'm not really sure if having Knative, like having Knative integrated with this sync, how can this work? Like it's going to be two different tools, but also when someone is configuring Jenkins' sync, we, we want to spin up Knative so we can, you know, configure like an infrastructure as code or something similar to that. 
But I was actually curious in hearing your guys' opinion on um, the Jenkins as a sink infrastructure, specifically going on using a pub sub like infrastructure, going for a different uh, like a different protocol for both Jenkins as a source and a sink. For example, if we want to introduce Kafka both for Jenkins as a as a source and also as a sync, you know, like because cloud events does support like the, the protocol um, for using Kafka and also if we want to go with like a queuing infrastructure. So there's rabbit MQ which supports the, the kind of system that we might want to work with in a fault tolerant and um, sort of like a fault like transient failure tolerant system. I was just, you know, that's a very, that's a question that's everywhere. I was just, if you guys have an opinion on that, or what do you think about that? So I think we can try implementing refresh probably uh, with HTTP. But if you want to uh, start playing around with the Kafka protocols for the cloud events, what you could start doing is you could just set up uh, like Kafka, I haven't worked much with Kafka, but you could just set up the infrastructure for now and then start playing around with it. And then along the way, uh, you will see problems which come in some things which could be better. But uh, in terms of implementing PubSub and everything from Jenkins side directly, I'm not so sure about that. We probably, it probably would be good if all of that stuff, like uh, even retries and st uh, all these things actually would be managed by, you know, some kind of middleware, some eventing middleware like Kafka. Yeah, and that's what for Knative, that's what they, the, like the broker is doing. So, you know, you have events coming in from, um, Tecton and that's using sort of like a Tecton outbound and then sending a specific kind of event which Knative is expecting over to the event broker and the event broker or the cloud events event broker is the one who is implementing the vtries and also implementing sort of an asynchronous way of handling all of the events and the messages which are coming over. So with the Jenkins is saying uh, that like my only concern with, you know, because they said, uh, I like remember them saying that, you know, since all different sources have different data or different way that they have structured their cloud events. Um, I don't, I don't remember them saying that any specific solution for designing an agnostic sync specifically has worked because everything is different. So we might want to think about just implementing, when we're thinking of like implementing a genetic sync, uh, also just thinking about having that middleware, which can handle different kinds of both like protocol and also the different structure of data that's coming in and then design it in a way that Jenkins should receive it. <laughs> I don't, I am not, really sure if that can work though, but I feel that might be helpful. Shruti, from my understanding, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, the way that they're, they're using the broker, this middleware, it is what enables the sync to be agnostic to the underlying technologies. So this is what provides essentially like a translation layer, depending on whatever underlying, if you're doing RabbitMQ or if you're doing Kafka or what, whatever mm -hmm. underneath. Yeah, I think it's, uh, so for them, what I understood was that the, the responsibility of creating sort of, you know, um, uh, both the events which are, which are understood by the sender and the receiver, it's the responsibility of both the source and the sync. So I can actually go back and pull out their, um, like the, the POC that they have. And also there's a PubSub light plugin for Jenkins, which is a light version of PubSub, not necessarily something that 
uh, can be helpful, but definitely, like I've looked into it and this, this definitely like looks like something that we can use. If you think we can use the existing logic and uh, the PubSub plugin which you're talking about, uh, could you send the link to that plugin? Yes, it's over um, on the, the, the GSOP Slack channel. Is it PubSub Light plugin? Mm -hmm. Yes. If you can use use this. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I was saying if you, if you could use the existing logic in the PubSub Light plugin without having to write something new, then it's something. Uh, maybe it's a good idea to experiment with it. Um, so initially, why don't we try play, like playing around with those k-native brokers and see how that goes? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And um, and also like another thing is if we if we do want to support just k-native, um, where or how should inside like as a part of the plugin. When we try that with Knative, does it mean that we support only Knative? Because I think cloud events are agnostic that way. Anything that reads cloud natives, uh, cloud native, cloud, sorry, I'm saying cloud native, but I mean cloud event. So anything that reads cloud events will uh, like read a cloud event, right? Uh, whether or not it is supported by Knative. So even the broker, I think, is such that it will just help routing the events, if anything. It it, uh, it necessarily doesn't have to be supporting only uh, cloud events for um, K-Native. Uh, yeah, so the K-Native, like the K-Native broker specifically works with cloud events, so this is like, it, it can work with other structured event data, but I think like the Knative brokers itself um, is mm -hmm. only work with um, cloud events. Uh, but if we like want to substitute this with something, so like, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. So for um, there, the, the POC that they had, they had like tapped on cloud events, which was sort of that stepped on outbound, um, which is like sending cloud events over and then it's receiving it and then they have a trigger. So it's just like if any event is coming and looking like it's from Tekton. So that trigger, it's basically, you know, how we were mentioning um, setting filters. So CE type C, so that's what the trigger is going to do is basically set filters. So um, the trigger is going to be like, okay, if any event is coming of the type um, C dot checked on or whatever, then uh, send it over um, to this captain inbound. And the captain inbound is what sort of transforms it to be used by um, captain. So as Kara was saying that in a way that cloud events broker, it is, it is like agnostic because this is only actually dealing with um, the triggers, which are, you know, looking for a particular type of an event, but both of these services, so Tecton and Captain here, have their inbounds and outbounds, you know, which are sort of dealing with that conversion of um, events into a format which can be used by each other. So if Tecton has this outbound, Captain has this inbound, and what this is going to do is basically transform the events coming from Tecton into something that Captain can use and understand. Uh, so that that was one of the thing which was I like thing the, the thing about Knative which is really interesting is you know it is working with cloud events um, as are so we are we only like you know we can set uh, or a person can set triggers for the Knative service which will be running inside of or maybe like as a part of our plugin. Um, it's sort of that interoperability also between different operating, uh, I mean, open source tools uh, operating together. So a user would have to set up these triggers, but those triggers won't be inside Jenkins as a thing, but they would more be inside like the Knative service, which is running as part of this plugin. 
Um, but the only thing again is about these inbounds and outbounds or those are specific, you know, um, with how you mentioned the direct interoperability system. So again, having those uh, agents and, and that kind of system. So that mm -hmm. is one thing. So it will still be indirect, you, like in our case, mm -hmm. with uh, cloud events, it will still be indirect interoperability because uh, what will happen is, um, uh, so imagine extending this cloud events broker to like one more uh, row, sorry, one more column, okay? You extend this to the right, you copy paste this uh, captain thingy to the right, and just replace captain with Jenkins. Sounds easy, <laughs> but I'll tell you what it will look like. So the captain bridge and tecton dashboard is the front end. The CLI is there. Forget forget about the CLI. Uh, but the that will be the Jenkins front end. Like that will be the Jenkins uh, port. 8080 from where we can check the Jenkins UI. Okay. Captain inbound. So Tecton triggers are basically web hooks. Okay. And these are these are event listeners which which we can use, uh, which Tecton can use. And then uh, th th these are created on Tecton side and then consumed by the broker uh, where a trigger object is made by the K native cloud events, uh, by the by K native. And this trigger object uh, is created with the uh, webhook URL given by Tecton. Okay, so that's what is triggering. Same thing is with kept on inbound. Do not look at the, so these two are technically the same because they are both webhooks. Okay, now here Tecton cloud events is actually, uh, so I, uh, so Andrea actually did most of the work on this, but I did, did work on this a little bit, the cloud events, uh, what do you call it? Controller for Tecton. So what the cloud events controller for Tecton does it, it just sends cloud events. So you configure a sync where you want to send cloud events and you send the cloud events uh, and the cloud events are sent to that place. That's all is that's happening. So uh, what is happening here is that all the events are just sent to the cloud events broker over here from Tecton. And the trigger is the one which is actually doing all the work here. Now, to translate this into Jenkins, the captain inbound, captain outbound, or tecton triggers, tecton cloud events, what it looks like instead of if instead of inbound, you would have you would have so inbound and outbound can be translated to source and sync directly, and which the cloud events plugin will handle. So um Right now, uh, right now, what we are done with is the outbound, right? You would say that we are done with the outbound, and we are kind of uh, working on the inbound, inbound stuff. So, and we are trying to make the inbound stuff a little better. So, in terms of the inbound, uh, which is Jenkins as a sync, so. This is that's that's the inbound stuff that we still have to work on and like make it a little better. That that is our next step in this process. But for now, what we can do is, and I think it'll be a good exercise as well, with like just uh, play with the same architecture and uh, forget about this. I don't know what this cloud events player is. Very frankly, I think it might be a UI from which you can. Yes, start. this is this is like similar to Sockeye, but for uh, K native. Okay, so it's it's basically like a more sophisticated socket right? for so the cloud events player view monitor and measure cloud events. Okay, so uh, what we can do as a good exercise is uh, we'll just replicate this entire architecture for Jenkins, and then uh, we will remove Captain out of the picture and then slide in Jenkins, and then uh, obviously uh, we won't be able to. Uh, do any inbounds right now, but what we can do is we can do outbounds. So what we'll what what we'll do is we'll just start a job, a Jenkins job, simple job, and then uh, we'll do an outbound. We'll send an event. You'll have to configure a K native trigger to say that once the this uh, Jenkins type of event comes. Uh, trigger a Tecton pipeline, which does something. 
okay so i think this this would be a bet, uh, this would be a really good experiment which you can do over the next week and in this in this way you can probably gain an idea what the poc will look like and also you can uh, showcase this to the event say that you have uh, uh, done a poc with uh, jenkins interoperability with tecton and obviously if that works with tecton it will obviously work with captain as well because uh, in the trigger you probably you probably have to create a similar trigger the only thing you will have to change in that trigger is the webhook which it's calling and the payload that is there so um i think that's the good next step you could take but uh, i i don't know if i'm just blabbering or i have answered any questions <laughs> is there something that i'm missing out or not haven't answered yet no no it does it does make sense and um like i am following because you have more insights on this since you have worked with this system um it does make sense uh the the only thing that i'm just like looking at right now is sort of understanding that if we are um because i remember them mentioning how the inbound and the outbound is for, for both sort of like effect on and captain is also doing a bit of manipulation to adjust the event in the way that's coming over so i think that it's a, yes it's a very good step and we can try with both tecton and captain as you know just having captain and tecton both as sort of like sending or like receiving events from for now we can just have them as uh, inbounds we don't have mm -hmm. need to take the outbound from them we can just have them as inbounds and uh, just the setup should be fairly simple but the the uh, part where you will have to uh, do some learning would, would be the tecton triggers bit uh, and the crds and stuff that we are using there i can help you set it up if you want um and we can kind of do like a poc uh, with jenkins and tecton yeah that sounds like a really good idea uh yeah i was going to say something uh I, yeah oh yeah so i was, I, I was going to say um that also if we do decide in the future to sort of move with this architecture i also was wondering uh, again going to the question of how can we enable this this thing in the middle you know like the k native system mm -hmm. um uh jenkins like the cloud events plugin for jenkins so i'm just thinking a bit about that of how you know if there needs to be a script that can also start this architecture but that will also need like a pod uh, you uh, we, so this is this is a fairly decoupled system so you actually you don't have to think about you know making this a uh, dependency is is that what you think about, of that this cloud events broker would become a dependency to the jenkins cloud native plugin cloud um, cloud events cloud events cloud events plugin no no i'm not thinking necessarily as a dependency but uh more or less like if we are you know like if we need k native as sort of a service from inside of jenkins plugin as sort of like this always needs to to this needs to be there so like yeah maybe maybe we can say dependency but also like it obviously can work without it we don't always like need k native but if if someone happens to do or happens to need this system running mm -hmm. they wouldn't want to go back and set this up on k native but they like need a system which is you know asynchronous and which can uh similar to like in a native can handle all of this like have that cloud events broker so if we end up using like kafka look using you know some other pub sub mechanism or some queue we still have to we would we might like have to make so any structure or any format of like uh, supporting cloud events because we we don't have the trigger inside of jenkins as a thing for a source right 
we only have that inside of Knative. So for that filtering and then sending it over. Yeah. Because the idea here. We'll do one more example after this. So once you are able to achieve this uh, bit of uh, exercise where you replace Captain with Jenkins and uh, test with Jenkins outbound and Tecton inbound, we'll do one more exercise where we replace this uh, middle bit of cloud events broker and we replace it with something else. Um, and we could probably discuss that next time. I'll try to figure something out. But maybe re we replace this with Apache, you know, and see how we can make that work. Because uh, the uh, point of indirect interoperability is that uh, you don't, you, it, it should all be fairly decoupled. And you're just using uh, like our data packets to tell each other what's going on, what is happening. And uh, you, your, your focus is that. So mm, from what you're saying right now, it seems that uh, you are considering this cloud events broker probably as a hard dependency at some point, but that won't be the case. So you, uh, and at that point, when we do the second exercise, we also get a better idea of what the uh, event filtering or something, if you want to do in, uh, on our side, what that should look like, what's important, what's, uh, or uh, just some simple filtering, even maybe use regex or something. Um, we, we could do that on our side, but I think it's a good idea to do some like, Test architectures, like in this case, like this is actually a very good diagram. Um, if we just replace Captain with Jenkins for our first uh, first go, and on the second go, we replace the middle uh, bit, the Knative bit, with something else, like Apache or something, mm -hmm. like a different broker. Okay, this mm -hmm. I just checked some documentation. They have their own Kafka broker as well. Maybe you could just extend. Uh, instead of completely replacing to use the Kafka broker um, to send things to Kafka initially and then remove after that, remove it completely and then just connect uh, Jenkins to Kafka to Tecton or do something like that. I'm not sure how well that will work. I, have, I don't have uh, great experience with Kafka, but initially I think it's a good idea to go with uh, the, just the Jenkins replacement then extending the cloud events broker to have a Kafka broker as well, so that you can trigger some Kafka jobs. And I'm not sure Kafka topics. Um, uh, my Kafka lingo is not on point. Uh, and then uh, we can do an experiment where, where we remove the Knative based Kafka broker and just flip that with a normal Kafka broker. We could. So, so we decide on <laughs> in like giving users the ability to to choose the the protocol binding. So, do you do you guys think that that like that protocol binding should sort of um, like the user is entering it, or if like a person is selecting a particular kind of broker, it just automatically gets selected. I think that's the the more easy way. I think that's like the better idea. Yeah, it should be fairly easy because, uh, like, you can you can you can say something like uh, protocol binding, and then in a drop down they can select Kafka or HTTP or whatever. And then when you're uh, creating the, um, yeah, it should be fairly easy. I think just like when you're creating it, you have a switch case. It should be simple enough. Yeah, and like the UI right now, it does like support sync type, you know, it has that HTTP sync and other sync. So you just need to go on to other sync and then implement the, so. My, my, like my computer battery is sort of, it's like, it's not really, super amazing right now so i'm starting my idea am i intelligent it might crash but <laughs> and i'm going to try and sort of like 
show around. Not be computer. That's all right. Um. Um. Yeah. So you know, like um, like you suggested having an abstract, like a sink and different kinds of sink are just extending from it and then like um, developing over it. I think that can be really helpful here because we have an HTTP sync, which is um, extending from the abstract cloud events sync. And then we will just have different kinds of sync, which is designing events. So we might, I think we might also not I'm need- I'm actually uh, thinking if yeah, abstract makes a lot of sense, but my, uh, but the, final product is going to be a JSON, right? Like, like, like a JSON object, like a cloud events object. The final product is a cloud events object, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking instead of doing the entire abstract thing, would it be better to have a sort of switch case which manages all this and because I, I don't want uh, you to waste too much time on the UI. Uh, I think that this is going to um, be like very, I think in, in terms of just making different sync classes, because in that way we can sort of just separate this, the, the kind of syncs. So the UI has a sync type, right? So a person can see the sync type. And what this can do is also just sort of separate the UI sync type with the implementation sync type. So the syncs are sort of kept separate. And what this will, this will really need if it, it'll just look at the, the place where we are sending events and see if the sync type is HTTP, then use the HTTP sync class to send events. If it's a different format, then use that format. So we can use switch case there and then just go into classes. Uh, because um, we still would have to do the, the design of the cloud event is going to look different. I can try, I can like try making either, whichever would make more sense we can go forward with. Yeah, um, there's, I am just, I just think that right now I have a gap in knowledge because I'm not sure how the, like I was just thinking, do I really even know like the protocol binding and what it means for Kafka? Even I, I would have to just check before I say anything really, because uh, yeah, I I even have to figure it out right? uh, to tell you the truth. But uh, what we can do is we can sync sometime this week uh, once we gain enough info on what that is, and on my side also I'll check it out what we can do, um, but I think to start off uh, with the Kafka bits, to start off with that, we can just use the Kafka broker uh, for uh, which k native gives, and we can start off with that before moving on directly to Apache. So. Sounds good. Um... I'm really sorry. This like the whole thing with like the power issues and the power cuts here, like that it just really derailed what I had planned. Uh should have been more planned. That's all right. Um it's fine. Um anytime like uh when do power cuts happen? These are they I know they, they must be very erratic. And I'm not sure if it's the same problem that is happening in Punjab or that's happening in UP, but- uh, People here are just lazy, like don't wanna, like there were four people who were fired over this yesterday, like in the power select department, because they weren't- Are we recording this? Able to, yeah, like we had a call for 18 hours straight, like from, it went from like 12 p.m. and it finally came at like 5 a.m. ish in the morning. And there was one day, that was like one day and then kind of the same things happened over. 
because they weren't able to find what had happened in that 18 slash whatever armor got. So they had, they had to fire four people. That's just this state. Oh. The yeah, firing people is not going to help. Um, <laughs> um, but Yogi, right? I don't know. Um, I I can't say much make much about that. But I hope you just get uh, light on a more regular basis. Um, are there any kind? But uh, when are you free this week? Then, uh, or you can just actually just ping me. I'm pretty much free this entire week. And you just ping me when you're free, and we can catch up on the release bits. And then after that, if you want to sync on the um, the architecture bits, I can help you with that as well. Yeah, that, that sounds really helpful. Thank you, Robin. Thanks, everyone. Uh, side note, um, you've already been able to deploy Sokai. So you're kind of halfway there with uh, setting up the brokers. I don't know what else might be needed, but uh, for all the CRDs and all the CRDs that you need, you were able to install in Knative is something you were able to install in Minikube. Uh, the only next thing of you, uh, the next thing you can do is you can you just have to figure out what triggers are, how to set up triggers, and all, all those little bits. And then then after that, you'll have to figure out uh, running Tekton locally on your Minikube and uh, using the cloud events controller for it. I don't know if you need that. And uh, setting up the triggers, uh, which you will definitely need. So the trigger template, trigger bindings, and whatever things are there in the triggers uh, controller, you have to uh, learn a little about them and then just uh, uh, create the event listeners and then give it to the cloud event triggers and then once uh, and set Jenkins as a source on one of the broker, I think. So uh, we can talk about that sometime this week. Just let me know whenever you're free. And I'm pretty much free every week again. You can just ping me, let me know. And in uh, have you? Also, like work with Captain, so we can also sort of try that out just to make sure that if things are fairly similar for different systems. Um, not exactly. I did deploy it, but I couldn't get to running things with it. Um, I. I was, I was just, I just got a little confused with the abstractions and the wording they use for certain things. Yes. Um, so, but I will probably have to check it out at some point, and we can just, uh, you know, have a hacking session and figuring up and figure out what Captain is about, because as far as I know, they, they are like the. Like they really embrace cloud events and try to work with them as much as possible and use that as their main medium of communication. Uh, Kara, like, do, do let me know if I'm going wrong here because I feel you know a lot uh, about tech, tech Captain compared to what I do. I, I don't have much of an idea about it. Actually, I was thinking that Mauricio would be the person, would be a really good uh, go-to person to ask about that. I think in his new work, he will be working with it. And focus on that. So I think I just I feel like he actually, of all of us, probably has the most um, context and knowledge. Yes, yes. So uh, maybe in the next meeting, what we could do is we could have like a captain session uh, after after the hacking session, maybe and figuring out stuff, uh, whatever questions or anything we might have about captain, uh, we can ask them to um, Mauricio when he comes in the next meeting. We can make it make it a point to call him for the next meeting for the captain discussion. Um, yeah. I'm not sure, but do we have a event sync meeting today? This is August six. 
see. Wait, let me check actually. Yes, it's August 16th, the next one. Oh. Have they changed to a monthly format? I don't think it's, I don't know, but I'm just going to go on with it and say that it's the summer. <laughs> uh, I'm probably, but I'm not sure. Or, uh, you might have, you might know more about it. <laughs> I think that is exactly correct. It's, it's, it's due to the summer. Um, we did the same thing with the interoperability mm -hmm. seg. Uh, let me sense. There, so I also like I have like the started with Jenkins is the same again. The one I'm, I'm, again like the one thing is just setting up the sort of maybe I would say triggers because we have been talking in terms of triggers for K native, so triggers here, and that's why when I was you know like mentioning. Um, like that dependency with K native, that one thing was leveraging triggers that K native has because yes, it, it it will it will be easy to implement it inside of Jenkins, but if we are already working with another sort of system that that is natively made to trigger and filter based on a cloud events metadata. Um, I think my question here would be that what what should be our sort of dependence on using any form of de or designing any form of triggers inside Jenkins as a sink? And when I mean triggers, like more specifically, like filters and just triggers, both included. Specifically, cloud event triggers, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, uh, that would be Jenkins as a sync, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wait, um, no, I'm... <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jenkins is a sync. Yeah, yeah uh, so probably in that one sync, what we can do is we can have a, a object for triggers, which the user can set up and then certain, um, like if you, if in the sync you say, uh, you want to create three triggers which do three different things. And the first one would be something like, you know, just start job one, second would be like start job two, third would be start job three. Uh, but you could do that. Like, and I think before we reach there, we'll have to kind of uh, like uh, uh, redo the UI, move it, move it to manage, uh, manage Jenkins and do all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, we can we can start off with that. Um, uh, when we whenever we do it, we can uh, con while configure sync, we can have like these boxes for triggers, and each trigger will have uh, you know a particular project endpoint or a, like a build job or run a Jenkins pipeline, like do any any of those things. Um. So yes, the work on that. I have been working on it and I, I would say that most of it is like sort of moved out, but it's not like very clean because I was you know, like just rushing over and like writing it down. So still like I would move probably like everything and then design the idea with Jenkins as a sync specifically aligned with triggers and filters. Yeah, I feel that there's a lot of stuff that we need to do with Jenkins with us as a sync. Um, it's uh, it's probably it's probably a better idea to do it in some time as we understand you know the architecture bits itself and how the sync would be used, and getting started with the architecture with the cloud events Docker and everything is a good place to start like once we start understanding the one uh one flow which is jenkins to tecton then we can start understanding the other flow which is tecton to jenkins and what that would look like and uh, we can we can get some 
idea of there, there was a plugin i think uh, the events plugin or something which was mentioned on the design document initial design document also and we can gain some you know, we can get some help from that key with of how we can uh, you know design that part or if we can just use uh, use the implementation that they've already done and kind of uh, re refactor it for cloud events i think that would be a good step ahead as well yeah um yes that that sounds good and most of triggers for this like the the, the generative broker they're usually set on the header fields or not the headers i would say the metadata about mm -hmm. the event so if, do we still want to sort of have that structure specific like probably like in this introductory and in the starting out phase want to keep the filtering option for the body or, or the data specifically of the event as well yeah we should we should allow the user to filter everything for example mm -hmm. and the uh, by fields like we should allow them to filter each field individually with a different filter each part of the header each different header with a different filter and then the body itself with a different filter like the body contains this 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 uh like i think we should allow the user to do that mm it will be very um yeah <laughs> i'm sorry go ahead go ahead go ahead yeah because if we just uh, allow only a few kind of filters like only the header or you know some parts of the body i don't think we need to do that but just the header i think it will be good for to start off but we should um, allow them to do everything and i i don't know i don't think it will be that hard even to just do the body also so i don't know yeah so if you guys can see my screen right now we we are looking at so we're still inside of the poc and we're looking at the um like how they're designing of the triggers for tecton uh so like tecton outbound yes um so like the events which are going out from tecton and so you know they have this well, let's see so they have like the bindings they have like header.mat c type this is the c type that uh, an artifact was published uh, you know this they're doing like bits with expression replacing the register whatever um and then they have like these bindings where they have okay um the name this is the name like sh captain context and body.sh captain context so this is like this like this is the binding with like the the event data like, like whatever is present inside of the event body so like obviously here it's like that they are aware of the kind of events which um which is triggered from tecton so like the entire body and the entire type so i think that we can take reference some like somewhat reference for this but for us it's going to look very different because we obviously can't just like give them like bindings like okay or just like filters like okay this is going to be inside of the body and then body dot whatever because we don't know where it's coming from so that's also one thing that we have to think about of how we can allow user to go very modular with whatever um filters they're setting on the body because our sync is agnostic and it doesn't know how to part it, it knows how to parse it but but it doesn't know how to find that particular piece inside of the body uh that's like that's one thing that they they're thinking about <laughs> yeah uh, if you remember we discussed this uh, last time with the cl interceptor so mm -hmm. i don't think we discussed actually 
we probably did though mm -hmm. uh, so the the so if you can go back to the yaml for triggers and you go back to the filter that was there i can show you so what is happening over there that they are using an interceptor uh, which is a common expression language interceptor which we saw last time and the language that they're using over there with the header dot uh, match something something um so that language is the common expression language and i don't think they have a java library uh, so that we could use uh, which we could use but it is definitely some an idea with we with which we can go ahead so instead of cl we could use something else for filtering and we can obviously start off with uh, we can obviously start off with something else like uh, you know just simple matching we don't even need any kind of library but uh, in due time what we can figure out is uh, what we can use for this sort of you know um, data extraction from the cloud events which the users can use ahead in their whatever or triggers they are uh, using so in this space what is happening is that they are binding certain variables uh, to certain uh, so they are binding certain values to certain variables mm -hmm. and using them uh, to run in their pipelines so uh, what this allows the user to do is that the the dynamic nature of the pipelines which is uh, changing the variables and ru running them the changing the variables part is completely done by the triggers themselves so they don't have to like the uh, devops guy or the whoever it is he doesn't have to think about it so this is definitely like some feature which we, which we should have in some uh, whenever we are done with the initial implementation of the sync so once once we are we reach the trigger stage and we are able to do match we, at that point we should figure out key when we like what do we need to do for this uh, value value bit right yeah like because as i i don't know if they like, am understanding correctly but the the interceptor that they're using is more specifically for like the matching but like the bindings is what like when we were you know talking about extracting maybe the job name from the event body that's coming for jenkins you know so tecton is like okay i have completed this artifact and this is now what i want like i want to start a job with this name so that's so something like maybe body dot um jenkins job name and that would be that would have the name of jenkins job name and then we would trigger a job like using using that particular variable yeah. um so so the the interceptor it i'm not sure if like mm. using that inside of i mean yes we can use that obviously it it'll be used inside of the event body um but that modularity of extracting specific values and i think that's one thing that the the that the system for the poc with um captain and tacton captain uh, yeah like the inbounds is sort of helping with that they know what's coming over uh, but so, we don't um so as we move forward we we will obviously have to give examples of how to use this plugin with different systems so mm -hmm. at that point we'll have to give examples of like what it will look like you know to use it with tecton and there might be an examples directory where we can keep the stuff and we should do that and uh, if you notice here this is this part of the uh, eventing is not that dynamic like they know where the where certain uh, things are like the trigger id the context and all so these things we need to be sure of these these are something we need to be very sure of that's why and that's why the format that we are using for the event in the cloud event also matters a lot mm -hmm. so yeah but i i think i think we can actually take this conversation ahead 
at a later date as we you know kind of, so right now we are just kind of getting acquainted with this so i know like there's like ideas flowing and all but slowly as this kind of uh, you start getting used to these ideas you will figure out that uh, you'll figure out the right path to take so it's good that this is simmering in your head right now um but once you start working with the architectures and stuff i think you'll get a better idea of what stuff should look like what it should be because you you would have done enough uh, um like you you would have seen enough things to know what uh, what needs to be done ahead like for like right now you're looking at these uh, tecton triggers like you work and work on setting them up at some point you'll figure out okay captain inbound outbound this is how it works then you'll get a better idea of like how the cloud event side cloud events plug in side of things should look like because uh, users here are using uh, these things uh, mm -hmm. once they switch over to something else they'll they'll have a similar concept in their head and they'll also be able to work uh, with the same concepts more easily and it will be easier for us also in developing yeah that's that's a good idea um all right well <laughs> thank you Rahul, and thank you um well, everyone had to go but also thank you everyone <laughs> and thank you Clara uh forward with the things that we've talked about today let me know, let me know if you let me know if you're free this week and we will discuss some of the stuff and help I'll help you setting in some of the stuff which you need to go forward yeah mm -hmm. and um, congratulations on uh getting first part of gsoc done <laughs> congratulations thank you it was again it was like hell from you guys so like thank you for for all the work you put in and for being amazing thank you <laughs> thank you for being amazing and working on all of the stuff it's great it definitely yeah you've done fantastic work shruti thank you so much thank you and we will continue doing this yeah. work <laughs> we surely will all right good meeting guys um i will we will we'll, we'll be in contact over the week and thank you very much for being here and thank you very much for your work Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.